Let's get Peter McGuire in. He's the CEO of XM Australia on uh, uh, Jackson Hole and more. Uh, Peter, great to have you on, as always, on NDTV Profit. And um, you know, let's start with exactly that. Uh, markets, I think, world over in a sort of wait and watch mood. Is too much being placed on what Mr. Powell will say uh, at uh, the symposium? Well, good morning, Tamara. I don't know if too much. I mean, you know, we've been working towards this for many, many months, and everyone's had their, I suppose, in their calendar. You know, we're getting to that point as far as Jackson Hole. No, I don't think so, because there's a split jury. It's either going to be 25 or 50, and the probability of about 35 or 40 percent probability of 50 basis points. So this is all impacting on what we've seen this week as far as sell-off, as far as dollar, has been quite dramatic. It's bounced a little bit to the upside in the last uh, matter of hours, but, you know, it was nearly through 101 there. So I feel as though uh, we're going to wait for every every word that uh, Fed Chair Powell says later today, and uh, I think we'll be analysing every sentence. We'll be analysing every sentence. What What's the bet, Peter? We should bet today that we will have at least one sentence which says it depends on the data that we see over the next few weeks because that has been the consistent stance of the Fed, right? We're not going to stick our neck out and uh, promise anything. It depends on how the data moves. So uh, looking at that and considering the fact that a September rate cut has pretty much been priced in, what really is the upside that could come out of this speech? Well, there's got to be something as far as the labour market. Maybe that's going to be the, or from an economic standpoint, Tamana, that's the only things that are really going to, I think, ring the bell. Um, that wasn't a good number that came out in the last 24 hours as far as that revision down about 818,000 jobs. Take it any way you want. It's as bad as, it, well, it's the worst you've seen since 2009. So he's got to put a, he's got to put a little bit of um, sugar on the sandwich today and make it more palatable. And that's where I think traders are mindful that there could be a 50 basis point cut. So, you know, this is all the factors that have got to be weighed in on this. And uh, we've just got to work through it over the next matter of weeks and see how it drops. Peter, good morning. It's Amina joining in as well. 2024 has been a year for gold. Uh, it's eased yep. off just a little bit, uh, of course, on back of the dollar strengthening in overnight trade. Uh, there are some people who believe $2,700 on gold as early as the rate cut in September. What is your strategy? What do you advise? Current levels still look good for a buy on gold? Well, Samina, great to see you, and I think so. You know, when you're putting a couple of things, first off, if you're looking in the gold-silver ratio, it's about 85 to 1. It was that yesterday, so it's probably close to it now. So that's something that traders need to be mindful of. The second part of it is, yeah, it was 25.50. It's back at about 25.25. It's not a big step up really to 2700. As that US dollar comes under pressure to the downside, this is all going to factor in. If they cut it by 50 basis points, I think you've got every chance you could see a 2700 handle. You know, I, I'm not sure where we are by year in, but there's still, you know, best part of four and a bit months to go. And, uh, yeah, I think 27 will be taken out by end of year, without a doubt. Hmm. Peter, uh, that's, of course, the story with gold, but how do we not talk to you about crude? Yeah. Who would have thought that crude would have it so rough this year, right? Uh, where are your bets? We've seen a little bit of a recovery, uh, again, in overnight trade, but for the year, crude remains lower. For the next six yeah. months, do you feel like there could be a recovery on crude prices and hence it becomes a long trade? maybe even between now and the 18th of September, and maybe even a slightly longer time horizon? Well, I think there's many answers to that, Samina. First off, remembering where we were, you know, as far as that October situation last year, Israel and, uh, and, and the situation there. So oil went for a big run up over Christmas, and then naturally it was sold off from that, you know, early 90 sort of number, and it's really cratered all the way back. Geopolitics are going to play a part, but we've got to look at the structural weakness from a global economic um, conditions, Eurozone, and certainly from China's consumption. So this is all a factor going forward. If geopolitics really ratchets up in the months ahead, then this could greatly impact price. So I don't think it's I don't think it's worst days. They might be behind us, and I feel as though you could see a leg up if things develop on that geopolitical front. 
Uh, Peter, just, you know, looking forward and we're talking about what the big factors are going to be, I think uh, we would be amiss if we don't talk about the U.S. elections. In fact, even as we speak oh. right now, uh, Kamala Harris is uh, giving her landmark speech at the Democratic National Convention and we have live footage of that coming in as well. So all eyes on Trump versus Kamala. Uh, this week, the likelihood of Kamala coming in is inching up. It's not seeming as uh, impossible as it was maybe a couple of weeks ago. How much of a difference does that make to how uh, not just U.S. markets, but the global markets uh, move coming ahead? Well, we're uh, two and a half months away, Tamana, from um, election day. So there's the first part. It's, it's narrowing down from a timeline perspective. Yes, certainly Kamala Harris, and we've got to be conscious of that. She's now running the show or pretty much going to be the the, the front runner, one would think at the present time anyway. So is that may gain momentum as far as an attractiveness to the voter base. I think that this is all going to add, I think, much, um, well, excitement to the, to the markets over the next matter of six to eight weeks leading into October because of a rate cut policy, because of an election. All of these factors are going to, I think, increase volatility. That's all I've put out there. But uh, I think it's going to be an interesting race and we haven't got long to wait to get a, get a result. Right. Uh, very lastly, Peter, I think the China story keeps haunting us, right? Uh, we keep yeah. hoping that things will change, the economy will recover, uh, base metals will get a bit of a relief. But there's been no sustainable rally across any of those ferrous or non-ferrous metals. From the way we look at things going ahead, uh, how do you approach the base metal universe? Is there anything here you're constructive on? If, and if yes, can you please share with our viewers what looks good to you? Well, first off, you've got to be looking at the structural weakness from our and all perspective, Samina. That's been really, you know, created. So that hasn't been a good, that's been a good trade to be short. But copper isn't too bad. When you're looking at it from a big picture analysis, it, we, it languished there at, you know, they're just over 8,000, then it hit the, you know, the mid eights. Now it's the best part of 91.30. It seems to have a little bit more, I think, possibility as far as a you know movement to the upside. But I think it's going to be whipsawing as far as volatility again until you get something dramatic. Don't forget, you saw those manufacturing PMIs come out of Eurozone. They were very, very soft. Uh, I've got the numbers there, 45.8 um, for July and 52.10 for um, the UK. So... There, you know, when you're looking at a contraction across that Eurozone, and that's motor cars, and that's everything hard metal, um, that's not a good sign, and that naturally flows into the China situation. Indeed. Uh, thank you very much, Peter. It's always great chatting with you. Have a great weekend, and we will catch you soon.